and welcome back to the world numismatic news as we take a closer look now at the 1920 main centennial commemorative half dollar coin. Following on and taking inspiration from the runaway success of the Illinois state centennial half dollar in 1918, the governor of Maine requested a similar commemorative half dollar be produced for the Maine centennial celebrations. Initially, this was intended simply as an ordinary circulating commemorative, thinking that it could serve as a type of advertisement of sorts, promoting Maine as a destination state. But by the time that the coins were made, they were being sold to the public at $1 apiece. A total of 100,000 coins were authorized in May of 1920, and again by the time the coins were actually struck, the centennial celebrations were largely over. A total of 50,028 coins were minted, with 28 going to the essay office. By the end of the year, approximately 30,000 of those coins were actually distributed, and actual collector or numismatic uptake was very slow though, and as a result, most examples seen today are poorly preserved in one way or another. The design itself is fairly straightforward. The obverse shows the main state coat of arms, depicting an elk resting beneath a giant pine tree on the central shield, with a farmer and a sailor on either end with the Latin word derigo, translating as to direct or to guide, beneath a stylized northern star. The reverse has the inscription main centennial with the dates 1820 when Maine was admitted to the Union to 1920 inside a heavy pine reef with pine leaves and pine combs intertwined. The design was based off of a sketch by architect and artist Harry Cochran when David F. Houston, the Secretary of the Treasury at that given time, sent the original sketch of the proposed design to Charles Moore, who at the time chaired the Commission for Fine Art. Arts. In order to request his opinion on the designs, it did ruffle quite a few feathers. Moore in turn showed the design to fellow commission member James Earl Frazier, who had previously designed the Buffalo Nickel. They condemned it as very ordinary in their words, and strongly suggested that the design should not be used. In a letter to Secretary Houston, he writes that the design would result in a coin far below the standard set by the new 50 cent piece. Of course, referring to the Walking Liberty half dollar which was introduced just a few years prior. He then goes on to lament that the design proposed is positively bad and would bring humiliation to the people of Maine if it should be executed. The Treasury Department and the Mint also would be made to suffer criticism from most people who have now been aroused to a feeling and a demand for artistic coinage. We should not return to the low standards that have formerly prevailed. This is especially true in the present instance where the coin goes ultimately to collectors and becomes a permanent memorial for the state of Maine. The Maine Centennial Commission, as well as Secretary Houston, basically ignored the Commission of Fine Arts' condemnation of the proposed design wholesale and implemented it anyway, getting Anthony de Francisi, who would later find tremendous success with his own design of the peace dollar to sculpt and engrave the design for this coin. Today, the coin is easily obtainable for collectors at every level. With a bit of patience, a low-grade example can be netted for around $50, but it won't be the most attractive example. However, an MS-63, and if fortune smiles on you, maybe even an MS-64 example, can be obtained for less than $200. From there, the picture changes a little, as gem level coins, especially above the MS-66 level, do actually become quite scarce, and prices start to jump up to around six to $800 per coin at that grade. In 2022, an MS67 Plus example was sold at auction, graded by PCGS, which saw a closing price of $7,930. 
$31. So let me know what you think of this coin's design in the comment section. Also subscribe to WNN and remember to activate notifications with the bell icon so you'll know when new videos are released. For the world numismatic news, I am Numisman saying thank you for watching. Stay safe, keep collecting, and have a fantastic day.